record all of those reports and activities, and that's what's included in my report. Um, yeah, I'm being redundant. Okay, I think that concludes that, that bit. Um, objective 1-3. Um, by April 2020, we want to host more public forums for residents to explore and discuss community-wide issues or topics. You may recall that um, earlier this year, we um, were awarded a grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities in ALA and partnered with the League of Women Voters, Will Met, to mm -hmm. host um, the American Creed Community Conversations Project. And we had a series of programs that were associated with that that affiliated very nicely with the types of forums that we want to create. And we see that as kind of an incubator for the type of programming that we'd like to continue to foster. Obviously, we were a little in advance of our goal of April 2020, and that's fabulous that we did that. We have some further plans in store for this fiscal year that are going to relate to that, too, and we've got a partner that um, has got some ideas for how we might be able to work on that, and I'll be providing more information about that here in the near future as well. Um, but we're really excited about the programming that was affiliated with uh, the American Creed program and thought that that was a great start and foray into uh, fostering this, this type of communication in our community. Anthony, may I, I did attend one of the community um, forums, and it was, um, it was exciting. There was a lot of passion, and it was, um, uh, I think, very well attended. So I, can I say kudos to our league members Please. for <laughs> coordinating and participating? Thank you. Um, in section two of our plan, under knowledge and discovery, um, we took a, a lot of action um, with relation to developing flexible, functional, and inviting interior spaces. Um, so one of my first goals um, when I came on was to evaluate our safety and security procedures. And I found great partnerships with um, our local fire department as well as the police in going through our facility. Um, and assessing um, what our building procedures for safety and security um, are and what improvement opportunities that we have. Um, Officer Pavely presented a personal safety and active shooter response training program for us on Staff Institute Day in March. Um, and we feel really grateful for the resources that were provided there and we'll continue to develop that with our internal person in charge program. Um, in March, we installed AEDs on all four floors of the library. Um, we're looking to further enhance uh, that resource this year, and I'll give more information about that in the near future. Um, moving on to um, Section 3, Diversity and Inclusion. We um, recently launched in June our Diversity and Inclusion Committee. Um, and that committee is currently developing a position statement um, for the library uh, that we hope to advance to the board for your review and approval um, regarding our position on diversity and um, a developing a comprehensive plan to integrate diversity into our library programming services and staff. Um, also related under Objective 3.3, um, our intergenerational programming really took off this year and is continuing to improve. Um, one of our first in, um, intergenerational programs was our inaugural Maker Fest event that took place um, in late February of this year. Um, over the course of just four hours, we had 400 people come through for this specific event, and we had over 12 partners um, that worked with us on this project. I'm sorry, we had, we had 12 employees and 43 partners, 43 exhibitors from local businesses and clubs and guilds um, that were advertising their resources. Um, and uh, connecting folks to uh, more maker-related activities. It's become a huge, a huge program here, and we're, we're definitely um, going to be dialing down on that a little bit more, including that 3D printer I mentioned earlier. Dialing um, down or dialing or up? Dialing up. <laughs> um, sharing resources, Section 4. All right, so I want to provide an overview of our outdoor renovation project because that was one of our key goals. The original time frame that we had when we adopted our strategic plan was that this project would be completed um, in the summer prior to my arrival here. So by last fall, the project was slated to be completed. We, in fact, commenced the project um, in January when we made our official um, move to approve the plan and uh, move forward with um, approving the bids. Um, so the project got kicked off this spring um, in April. And um, we had a very rainy season that kind of held up some of the progress on our plan. But we reached substantial completion by the middle of July, which was right on target with, the, with what we were expecting considering all of that weather. Um, so all of the goals of the project were accomplished. We, we got all of our objectives um, were met as part of that program. 
Um, that includes replacement of all the hardscape at the front of the library, the installation of a snow melt system beneath that concrete, the replacement and repair of the concrete underneath the bike pad, in including the addition of the village branded um, bike racks, uh, replacement of sections of the public sidewalk that had crumbled and were heaving, um, replacement of um, all of the outdoor um, seating options. So there are 12, 12 new bench options that are outside and replacement of the others. We replaced all of the um, memorials um, that were outdoors um, in the new landscape. We installed all new plants, um, native plants, at the recommendation of our partners in the Little Garden Club of Wilmette. Um, we installed new trees between the two parking lots. Um, we improved the parking lot in places where there were some muddy berms that got replaced with concrete. Um, a lot of details were, were addressed as part of that project. A lot of things that were on our, our, um, our short list from FQC uh, regarding our, our long range plan for, um, for capital improvements. We addressed a number of those as part of this project. And I think we accomplished it with great success. And I'm really grateful for the partner that we had um, and our architect from Tesco Associates, Jody Mariano, as well as our partners in Shales McNutt, our construction manager, Jason Perkunas. I think they all did a fabulous job on ad in advocating for the library and getting to the results that we've got. Do you all have any comments or anything to say about our big outdoor renovation project? I second what you just said. <laughs> I think it's great. It looks good at nighttime. So yes, it does. With the monuments on it. So next year, a fountain. <laughs> <laughs> a water feature. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you can play. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, all right. Well, so thank you for that. It was it was a really fun way to start um, my my tenure here at Wilmette to be able to have a project to wrap my hands around and to really get to know a, uh, the community and the team and um, I, I, it was really fun. So I'm looking forward to, to doing more of that type of work. All right. So. Um, it, Additionally, in sharing resources, Objective 4.2 relates to our personnel, and so there are a number of options that were listed there. We're taking a, a deep dive in a lot of administrative type activities right now, and that's just, I think, anything that would accompany hiring a new director would be a lot of inward looking as well. So I've, I've detailed a lot of things in here that we're working on um, with, our, with our team to um, it included this past year. You, you've accomplished a lot. You hired a new director. We hired a new head of youth services. Um, we've um, adopted as a leadership team a new evaluation process. Um, we're meeting with our staff more regularly. Um, we're working on developing a remote work and telecommuting uh, policy and agreement so that we can um, help folks to balance their work life um, priorities. Uh, we're also trying to create a plan to um, promote the incremental gradual increase to meet the state minimum wage requirements over the next six years. And we've got a plan for how we can increase that. Um, it is a challenge. Um, we'll be discussing this as we go forward in budget committees in the, in the future, um, but it is something that we're prepared to meet. The library did participate in the 2019 Laconi Salary and Fringe Benefits Survey Program. Um, we're going to get the results of that here shortly, but that allows us to do more benchmarking to ensure that we're uh, providing a competitive wage um, so that we can attract and retain quality candidates. Um, we did a lot to enhance um, support of staff in this last passage of the budget, which included um, an overall improvement in compensation of 3% for our employees for cost of living adjustments, as well as um, the next phase of um, uh, salary schedule um, adjustments that needed to take place for um, folks that need to be brought to midpoint. Um, we also have a little bit of revenue left over in there that we can apply towards either additional hours or new positions. Um, so we're working on that concurrently. Um, the board also approved um, uh, a really satisfactory plan for us to help um, promote staff participation in continuing education and training. Um, we're very grateful for your support of that. Um, this next year, uh, the Public Library Association Conference will be meeting in Nashville, and we're hoping that we can send some delegates from Wilmette to bring back information um, from that conference. And uh, a number of folks will also be attending the ILA Annual Conference this fall. 
Um, there is a, a sheet that's circulating around right now, too, about trustee day at ILA. Um, can I steal your thunder on mm -hmm. that while we're on the subject? We'll, we'll pass this along. Um, so trustee day is Thursday, October, October 24th. 24th. We'll pass the sheet around. Um, there is a one-day event at ILA that's dedicated specifically to trustees, and there's training in there that um, can be really beneficial to you. Um, if you're interested, uh, review the content there. If you're available, we certainly support your participation as we support the staff's participation. Um, and lastly, the last item that I would note in the strategic plan update is um, at the board's request, we've launched a program evaluation pilot program. And again, the purpose of this is to provide more um, analytic data for us to be able to study just how effective our programming is. So we targeted um, a key set of programs, including the American Creed series, um, the Summer Reading Club, our digital, our digital universe programs, um, as well as our one book programming and uh, we're using Project Outcome which is a PLA based um, analytics tool to study all the data that we're collecting from those surveys and that will help us to tailor better programming for the public in the future. Uh, that is my long-winded overview. Right. Do you all have any questions or comments about the strategic plan update for this past fiscal year? No, just a comment. You came in kicking, so thank you <laughs> for all the late hours that you spent yeah. in terms of getting it together. All right, well, we have a very passionate Open team, and, and I'm here to support them. Thanks. You're doing a great job. Okay, well, that concludes the director's report. Great. We now have, is there any other committee report? Uh, I'm going to do the policy committee met yesterday. And we will be bringing forth the uh, policies that we have reviewed for the September meeting. And you should be getting it, the trustees will be getting it two weeks prior to our next meeting to review and approve. Those policies deal with the bylaws that had been, that was probably the most recent update. You've got policy development, library administration, duties of trustees, the role of the Board of Trustees, and the ethics statement. And one of the things, uh, most of the bylaws are pretty much based on the Illinois statute. So one of the things that Anthony has done is sort of streamlined, not really streamlined, but sort of edited in terms of the duties of the trustees as well as the duties of the executive director. Okay. So we, you will be seeing that. We also discussed setting up a Roberts Rule of Order uh, seminar, so we'll be sending out a note probably in the fall, and Trustee Rogers, who does Robert Rule, Rules of Order for all his clients, will be doing a mini session for us, pertinent to us. And then the final thing is we discussed uh, audio taping and videotaping of minute meetings, of the, the uh, committee meetings, and at this time, I think the policy committee will review it later, but right now, I think basically the general feeling is that with the audio tapes, they're available for any trustee to listen to, but we're going to evaluate what that burden would be and also the likelihood of the general public wanting to listen mm -hmm. to the audio tapes as well as what the cost might be of videotaping those committee sessions. Because the committee se the committee's uh, sessions are basically working sessions, and everything that, th that is done in committee comes to the board, and all board members, as well as the public, are invited to those committee meetings. Okay. So that's, and right now we're probably one of only, I think, about five or three libraries in Illinois that actually record our trustee meeting. So that's where that is, and that's all I've got to see there. Are there any other committees that have met or have? We're, well, I can, we almost met, uh, and we okay. are going to schedule it tonight for the Advocacy and Partners Committee. Okay. Um, so our uh, intention is to meet before our September meeting so that we um, 
got some ideas about ways we might be able to partner with our other units of local government and we'll met but uh, interestingly maybe with some of the other libraries especially in the advocacy side uh, we have the exact same issues so we may have some opportunities to reach out to other library trustees if we don't make it to you know fabulous Tinley Park for trustee day maybe there's a chance we can build some relationships among some other trustees up, you know a little closer so that if we choose to take some advocacy positions get a little bit more weight and heft behind us. So um, we're going to uh, get together sometime in the next 30 days, and hopefully we'll have a plan for the year. And we're going to schedule a finance committee meeting at some point here <laughs> in the next couple weeks. Yep, so that we can set forth um, all the action that we need to do in finance committee. Summer's over. Not until September 22. <laughs> okay. Wait. Okay. Okay. about that. We got some Do you have any articles that you want to talk about? Not really. The only okay. uh, big thing, of course, is the upcoming conference with ILA, mm -hmm. uh, which is October 22nd to 24th, for anybody and everybody, not just the trustees. But there wasn't much of exciting interest <laughs> in any of the articles I read. Uh, over the last couple months, so <laughs> this is it. That's not always bad news. <laughs> <laughs> are, there, are there any overseas the reports? <laughs> <laughs> any overseas reports? Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of li I did see libraries. We, you know, we might, and we went in some beautiful. I'm trying to remember. 